So let's start talking about some more important things, like for example, movies. So let's say that this rectangle represents all the movies. By all movies, let's say we mean a large sample of movies or probably even all the movies represented. Okay, so what we're going to do is to pretend that the movies are scattered all over this rectangle uniformly. And let's also consider that therefore, because things are uniformly distributed across this, that the area of any region we can draw on top of this rectangle is also representative of the number of movies which are included there because movies are all uniformly scattered. Okay, so if I draw a large ellipse, then I'll capture more movies. If I draw a small ellipse, I'll capture fewer movies and so on. And let's also pretend that the total area of this entire rectangle is one, one unit. Let's say one square centimeter, one square mile, whatever we want. It's one square unit. That's the total area of this. So given that the total area is one, then if we draw a particular region, then that represents the probability in some sense. Okay, let's make things clear. So we've got a bunch of uh, all the movies, a very large sample of movies, and they're all uniformly distributed, and the total area of this rectangle is one. So now, let's say that of all the movies, 30% are hit movies, of course, very optimistic, but we need to have something visible on the screen. So let's assume that 30% of all movies are hit movies and therefore the remaining 70% are non-hit movies, which I call as missed movies. Okay, so given this is the case, if I randomly pick a movie, then what is the probability that it's going to be a hit? Well, the probability is going to be 0.3 because the hit movies occupy 30% of this entire region. The area of the whole region is 1, so therefore, therefore the area of the hit movie region is 0.3. And that's going to be the probability that any randomly chosen movie is a hit. And therefore, of course, the probability that any randomly chosen movie is a non-hit or a miss is 0.7. Okay, now suppose we add in addition now movies of Tom Hanks. Why Tom Hanks? Well, as good a person as any. And let's say that Tom Hanks movies represent 10% of all the movies. Again, a big exaggeration, but we need to be able to see something on the screen. Okay, so let's assume that Tom Hanks movies are 10% of the overall movies. And let's pretend that this oval occupies 10% of the space of this entire rectangle. Now notice that Hanks movies are sort of more skewed towards the hit side of the spectrum. That means what we are saying is that a good percentage of his movies are hits and the rate of hits for him is much better than the average rate of hits. So let's make it particular. Let's say that his hit movies are 60% of his movies. Right. In other words, if you choose randomly a Hanks movie, 60% chance would be that that's a hit. Okay. So let's say he's got a 60% chance of hit as opposed to the overall 30% that you have, okay? So, of course, given if you try to translate that into how much of the area is occupied by the hit movies of Tom Hanks, that would be 6% of the total area, right? Because it's 60% 6, 6, of 10%. And therefore, this region, which represents the hit movies of Tom Hanks, that represents 6% of the total area. And therefore, of course, the Hanks Miss movies represent 4% overall and 40% of Tom Hanks movies. Okay, so given this, we can calculate lots of probabilities. What is the probability that a randomly chosen movie is a hit? 0.3. Miss, 0.7. Tom Hanks movie, 0.1. Because 10% of movies are Tom Hanks movies. So any randomly chosen movie would have a 10% chance that it's a Tom Hanks movie. Okay, given a randomly chosen movie, what is the probability that it's a Tom Hanks hit movie? 
right? That is not only whether it's a hit movie, but it's a hit movie in which Tom Hanks was there. Okay, we already know that this area occupies six percent of the area, and therefore a randomly chosen movie has a probability of 0 0.06 or a six percent chance of being a Hanks hit movie because that's the area it occupies. So we can calculate all these kinds of probabilities. Of course, we can also calculate conditional probabilities. Okay, what is the conditional probability given Hanks? What is the probability that the movie is a hit? Let's say that is earlier we were just talking about hit movie randomly chosen. But we are saying I've chosen a movie and I can tell you that it's a Tom Hanks movie. What is the probability that it's a hit? Right from the data that I had given you earlier, we know that 60% of Tom Hanks movies are hits. So given that a movie is a Tom Hanks movie, you could say the probability is 0.6 that it's a hit movie. And similarly, the probability is 0.4 that it's not a hit movie. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is, suppose I say, well, I've picked a movie. It's a hit. What is the probability that it's a Tom Hanks movie? Okay. In other words, what is the probability of Hanks given that it's a hit? And also we can calculate hit movies comprise 30%. Out of these, this region is 6%. So this region represents one fifth of the total region of hit movies. That is 6% divided by 30%. And therefore, given a movie is a hit, the probability that it's a Tom Hanks movie is 0 0.2. Okay, so probability becomes uh, one fifth. Okay, so that's the idea here. You could calculate conditional probabilities. Now, of course, we were starting out to explore Bayes' theorem because Bayes' theorem is what is going to help us to approximate for our condition which doesn't exist in the database. Okay, so let's understand Bayes' theorem now. So I've just put this diagram, I've taken out other details which by now you should have memorized. Now let's consider just Tom Hanks hit movies. This region alone, the region representing only Tom Hanks hit movies. Okay, now I'm saying that this region the area of this region can be represented in two different ways, corresponding to the two conditional probabilities I had mentioned earlier. 